Hello, welcome to this key ideas video on Python in GIS. In this video, we will be introducing you to Python um, from small single lines of code to be able to um, run batch um, processing um, jobs. You don't need to know Python to use ArcGIS Pro and to produce um, really worthwhile uh, outputs. However, Python can be a really useful skill um, just to, to, to improve your, um, your workflow. Maybe you're wasting time on repetitive jobs. Maybe you yearn for more customization. Whatever it be, knowing a little bit of Python can really help you with your efficiency. So we'll start with looking um, in the uh, ArcGIS uh, Pro and we're going to run a demo on um, writing a label expression, just helping you customize a, a, an attribute table uh, command, for example. So I've got a project in ArcGIS Pro uh, using the same data set we looked at for counties, and I've got national parks um, around the UK. If we click on uh, one of them, um, I'll show you some, some of the um, attribute uh, information. Okay, so there you go. This is the Cairngorms uh, National Park. You can see it's all in capitals. Uh, that's what the uh, attribute table uh, looks like. So it's got a, a name field. Uh, is it just going to draw this? Yeah, it's got the name field, and you can see it's got all the uh, national parks, and they're in um, capital letters. So let's say I wanted to label my national parks on the map, I could do that by label uh, button and this will draw the labels on the map like so, but I might not be so happy with uh, the way it appears. I might not want to, to stand out so much and be capitalized. So I can go into the um, labeling properties. I mean one option is to go into the attribute table and just to rename that. Oh my goodness, that would be exhausting. You rename them all and then actually you change your mind and then you have to do it again. Well, here we go. We can change the language here to Python. We can pull in uh, the name field and we can start to use Python syntax like this, python.title. We can press that to verify. The expression is valid. And if we press apply, it will apply a Python um, syntax um, command to the um, labeling of the data set. And rather than having uh, capitalized letters now, it's it's, um, it's it's labeled them in a in a in a in a way that has the um, first word as a capital, Dartmoor National Park, like that. And so Knowing these little tricks can really help you um, having to change the labels in, in, in an attribute table without having to go through it. So I'm just showing you another example where we can change all of the text to uh, lowercase. Um, so that should um, change. There we go. So now it's all lower. There's another one for uh, upper. But that's how uh, it appears um, in the attribute table um, anyway. So probably for this one. Title is what we need. So that's a bit of a time saver. Okay, we've got another example now, <clears throat> this time looking at uh, English town centres. Uh, you can see I've got the uh, expression uh, for just the name being shown um, on the map, which creates um, an awful lot of uh, clatter. So now we can write a Python expression where we just select which names to, uh, to, to draw. So we'll look at the attribute table and see how we might uh, do that. We know that we want the name field because that contains uh, the name. We don't have to mess around actually with uppercase, lowercase, and they're already sort of in a nice title format. But but we can see we've got other attributes here. We've got shape area and shape length. So we've got some way of knowing the, the size of these town centers based on the shape area. That'll be a useful attribute. Maybe we just want to enable the big ones. So let's do that. So in the expression box here, I'm actually going to 
write a, a Python function. A function is a block of code which runs when it's called. So I'm defining first, um, or you know, using the def to um, to create this function. So def to find find label <coughs> name and shape area. Those are the two attributes that I want to, to call. And then I'm running an if statement. An if statement uses the um, or supports the usual logical conditions from uh, mathematics. So in this case, if shape area is bigger or equal to 50, 150,000, then we'll get onto that in a minute. But notice, first of all, that we're saying float. So I need to tell the uh, tell the code that uh, shape area is a number, not a text. Before we were looking at text. Now this is a number. <clears throat> so if that number is bigger or equal to 150,000, then we're going to return something. We're going to say, right, we're going to color it black, uh, which is a bit of code there, 255, so that's pure black. And then the font size is 10, um, plus, so we're concatenating this, we're saying plus, we're going to give it a name of upper. So actually, we're going to change that lowercase text or title text to uppercase. Um, and then um, we'll call in the font and color. Note, like if I press analyze here, the expression is valid, um, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. This will update. There we go. So now we've labeled our map with only the significant um, English town centers. So significant being bigger than 150,000, whatever that shape file is. Notice that Python requires this indentation. If I went like this, and then press analyze. Oh, the expression is still valid. But if I went like this and press analyze, oh, it's not because there's an indentation error. Indentation is is forced on us when we're using Python. It forces us to be neat and tidy with our code. So we have these indentations, which shows us when certain things are taking place. It's a bit difficult to to visualize in this window, which is a bit compressed. But that's a bit better. So we're saying if the float shape is this, then return this. And then we've seen that, what happens there. The beauty about running an if statement is, we can also specify um, what to do if that condition um, isn't met. So I'm gonna copy and paste a little bit of code I prepared earlier. This is the beauty again of Python. You hardly have to write code. If you've got some that exists, you can uh, you can steal that and uh, reuse it. So if uh, to find the function, uh, name and shape area. So if the float shape area is 150,000 or more, equal or more, then do what we've done over here. Capitalize it, give it a nice black. Else, or otherwise, if it's not, so if it's smaller than, we'll give it a blue and we'll give it a much smaller. And um, we're not going to do a... Um, uh, yeah, we'll just give it a name title. So uppercase and black, and then title. So that just... Um, gives an uppercase at the um, first letter of the, the word and then blue. So we'll check that that works, is valid, and we'll press apply. Okay, cool. I mean, we can do further customization. We can get this looking how we want. That's just an, an example, but we've done something there in our label without having to change anything in our attribute table. We've now got labels for significant sounds and um small blue ones for for the smaller size ones um, and we can change that and adapt that to to suit our needs so it's a powerful little um bit of code that we've just written okay so for my next demo i'd like to show you python snippets in our pro so we'll go back to pro this time i've got a, the same strategy ordnance survey data set i've got a rivers a shape file for the county of Devon, and I'm going to show you how to get a um, uh, Python snippet from a geoprocessing tool. It could be any geoprocessing tool. Uh, so first we'll run it here, and then we'll get the code. So input feature, I'm going to run it on the Devon river line. I want the output to be the same as the input. So I'm just going to check the uh, source for this. Uh, I'm going to um, copy that. Label demo strategy Devon Rivers line. Um, let's go label demo. Okay, so yeah, not where I want. So I'm going to paste that in and then I'm going to call it um, 
I'm going to give it a name of output just for simplicity when we're looking at the um, Python code. We know that's the output, we know that's the input. Output, oh, what do I sort it? Output 100 because I want to give it a um, value of 100 meters. It's giving me a warning here. Um, already exists. I've run this, I've practiced this already. That's okay, we'll overwrite it. And we'll press run. Leaving all other default settings. So it's run a buffer analysis. You can see the river, you can see the output 100. Right clicking on the um, result window goes, I can copy Python command. Wow. So I can copy that to any. Uh, any sort of area where I'm writing code. I can just paste that in and there is a line of um, Python code. Um, but more importantly here is I can uh, send it to the Python window. Now in Arc Pro you can do you can use your analysis in um, Python. You can open it in a notebook which is brand new to, to Pro and we'll be doing that in the practical or you can open the Python window. So that's how you can open the Python window there. I'm going to um, I'm going to try docking this um, over here. So I'm going to go send to Python window. So now I've got my one line of code um, here in the Python um, window. I can get rid of, the, I'll leave the geoprocessing toolbox there just while I talk it through. So this is the um, the command analysis buffer. It's, there's the input, Devon Rivers line. There's the output, so output 100. I'm going to change that to output 200. I'm going to change the um, buffer to 200 and leave all the other defaults as they are. Look, there they are, the defaults. And I'm going to press return and it's going to run the code. Get rid of the geoprocessing window. And you can see the beauty of running it in the Python window in our Pro is the output comes into the map. So there's the output there, output 200. So you can see if I wanted to run that tool a few times, just changing the snippet here is super in easy. If I press up, then I get the command I've just run, change that to 300, change that to 300, press return, it's doing it again. So a nice tool to sort of run the same thing a few times. Um, but what I want to show you next is how to perform a uh, for loop. So kind of what we just did, but on multiple files. So a for loop is when you um, you write a, uh, always for iterating over a sequence. So you might have a list of commands like 100, 200, 300, 400 buffers. Maybe you've got the um, rivers in shapefiles for all sorts of different counties. Um, so you can um, apply the um, buffer to all those different files. So for these files or for these buffers, apply the code to them. It allows you to be really efficient. So let's go through an example of that. I've written some code here. So what I'm going to do is going to copy and paste it into the command window. And we'll see what it says. So first we're setting an environment workspace. So C local data, label demo, strategy. I think actually I need to um, update that because I'm actually in local data week nine label demo now. Strategic, yeah, I am. See that? So I'll copy that and I'll update the environment workspace on Evil Demo Strategy. Set up variables. So a variable is when we are um, setting a container to store something interesting, some files, what numbers, whatever it might be. It's a container. So whenever we write say in this case rivers that's our variable so rivers now is a variable here where we're calling in this other variable our workspace and we're concatenating it so we're adding something to it we're adding rivers line dot shape actually we want um devon rivers line so let's update that devon rivers underscore line dot shape Buff distances, we're going to go 100, 500, 1000, and then we're going to loop through the different buffer distances and create buffers using each buffer. Notice that I've got these hashtags in front of the code. That just allows us to create a comment. 
so I can press return and add another comment and that makes it easy to remember when we're revisiting code what it does. It allows us to put in some text into the code so we can understand what it does. If you put a hashtag in front of the line it doesn't it doesn't recognize it as code so it's just it's, it's there for us. So here's the for loop look for now we're just defining this buff in buff disks. We've got buff disks here. So, so basically we're going to run through this for 100, for 500, for 1000. We're going to now do something. Notice again, it's um, we've got an indent here. So everything within this indent will be the four. Okay. So four buff in buff disks. Print the string buff. So it's going to be text. Recognize this as string. Is processing so 100 is processing, 500 is processing, 1000 is processing. So rivers out equals arcpy environment workspace rivers line plus the buffer shape. So this is good the output, but we're using the buff as a, a name in the file. So the the name is going to be appended to the end of the file. The the, the number of the buffer is going to be appended to the name of the file here. Uh, and now we're using our um, Python um, snippet, but I've just noticed that that's updated. There's our Python snippet we used earlier. Here's the one from my existing code, so I'm just going to change that. Very subtle change, but different version of Arc Pro. Arc Pi analysis buffer. So rivers, that's our variable, which is here. Then rivers line, there. Rivers out. We've defined the other variable here. Rivers out is this, with the name added to it. And then we're going buff, 100, 500, 1000. It's just going to call one of these each meters. Full, round, now those are our defaults. Planar, write a print statement so users know when the script is complete. Script is complete. That is out of this indentation, so it's not in the for loop. So if I press return twice, it's going to run. So 100 is processing. That's the first one. There you go, it's added it. 500 is processing. But He's going to add it. There it is. Boom. Thousand is processing. Script is complete. Hooray. So it's gone through a for loop there and it's added them to the map. Rivers line 100, 500, 100, 500, 1000 to the map. Oh, stunning. So we've only had to do it for three files there. But yeah, imagine if we had to run that over, you know, multiple different ones. Maybe we could do it again just to show you. 1500. I could change the name of the output to rivers line demo. It's going to still add that on. Uh, press press script is complete. I could put change that again. Press return twice. There you go. 100 is processing. There it is. Rivers line demo 100. Okay, you get the idea. 500, 1000, 1500. And then it's going to print it again. Script is complete again. Ready. Okay. So that's a really powerful for loop there. It's not finished there. We right click on this and we go save transcript. And then we've got a little um, Python script that we've say we can save to our wherever we like. We can call that in and it's there ready waiting for us for when we have to run a buffer analysis um, again. So some really powerful tools indeed. So we've used there the Python window. We've run some Python code. We have um, evaluated the results. We've looked at the buffer analysis. We've adjusted the code and then we've run it again. And that's the beauty about running it in a Python window. So in the practical, we're going to be doing um, more, uh, much bigger workflow working in a Jupyter notebook. Um, so join me then and I shall see you in the practical. Thanks very much.